Hey there, and welcome back to DIY Projects with Pete. In today's episode, we'll walk through the process of installing under ice LED lighting for an outdoor hockey rink. Let's get to it. My little helper Jack and I started by sorting out the lighting we've used in the past and testing to make sure it all still worked. I laid out each strand so I could get a good look at everything once it was dark, and for the most part, the lighting was still good, but I would need to fix or replace a couple strands that had dead sections. So I ordered a couple patch kits and a few new lights. The first thing we're gonna do is find the center of the rink. So I'll put a stake in at the end board and measure in 60 feet because my rink's 120 feet long. And then it's 60 wide, so I'll measure in 30 feet from the side. Of course, another way to find the center for the length and the width is just to count in the boards from the corner. So one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll put a stake as close as we can to the boards. And that'll help us find the center. Now I actually marked this previously just to speed up the process with filming, but we'd mark our hash for the center and then we can measure out from the side. You can see our center line is lined up with the middle of this board and so we'll use a stake and then measure in to find the center of the rink. And our 30 foot mark is right here. So we'll put our other hash, make a plus sign and we have the exact center of the rink. And if you're gonna do center circle lighting, go ahead and put that stake in. And we'll use it as a pivot point to create our center circle. And then you'll wanna put a hash close to each board side. And then I just put a C for center. This way you'll know exactly where your center line needs to stretch from. If you wanna do blue lines as well, just put a stake in. and measure the distance in proportion to your rink. Um, for us, we're gonna go about 16 feet or so, which turns out to be about right here. So if you don't wanna measure, just uh, we'll, we'll, we'll go from the center of this board, we'll say one board, two board, three board, four board. So four boards, which is basically 16 feet. Now I've already tested these lights, but it never hurts to test them again. So we can see that all of these fire up. We can go ahead and install them. The first thing you'll want to do is sneak your power cord underneath the board. I like to plug it in while I'm working with it so that I know that it's still working. And then we'll just stake it in place so we can pull on it. We'll use four inch long heavy duty yard staples to secure everything. Here you can see the difference between the more heavy duty 11 gauge yard staples I found on Amazon that go on the ground much easier versus the much thinner gauge and flimsy staples I got last year at the hardware store. The heavy duty ones were actually cheaper and worked much better this year, especially if the ground has started to freeze. I like to start about six to eight inches in from the boards. This is going to give the perimeter a nice glow. Once the first few staples are in, you can pull the rope tight to straighten it out and then place a staple every 10 feet or so, depending on how flat the rope lighting is resting. Feel free to use more or less depending on how things look to you. Go ahead and lay out the entire rope light around the boards so you can see how far they will stretch before installing the rest of the staples. Double check that all your lighting is working. I actually have a dead spot here for two feet. So I'm just gonna make a loop. The lights aren't working here so it'll just still look like one continuous line like this. Once you get to the corners, make sure the lighting is a little ways in from the feet of the boards if you have them. Use a staple every four feet or so to go along the corner boards of the rink. A dead blow hammer works well for putting in the staples and also comes in handy when installing the boards and the brackets. Once the first 150 feet of rope lighting was installed, I took a look at the next 150 foot section and realized the tubing had cracked 
and the lighting was flickering and some wasn't working at all. So I used a repair kit to add a new plug in to the lighting and also cut out that bad section. And this is a pretty simple thing to do and it's a good way to be able to reuse the lighting. Another extension cord was run across the rink to power this section of lighting and I put the plug outside the boards. I then continued installing the lighting along the perimeter. The perimeter lighting is really cool because it shines up against the boards a few feet and creates a glow around the entire rink. I ended up ordering an extra 150 feet of lighting to finish out the perimeter of the rink and my hockey buddy Christian stopped over for his second year of helping install the lights and the boards and having a second person really helps the lighting go in quickly. These rope lights can be cut down at two foot increments if needed, but we just overlapped the last couple feet and then moved on to the red and blue lines. Christian snuck the plug in for the rope lighting under the board and then ran it across the rink. You can buy custom cut LED rope lighting, but since I had a dead spot in the red line, we just ran a new 100 foot reel, cut it to 60 feet, sealed the end, and then I can use the remaining 40 feet by wiring a new plug to it or using it as a repair section in the future. Here's video showing when we installed the rope lighting when it was 3 degrees Fahrenheit or negative 16 degrees Celsius for the year 4 rink build and the rope lighting was harder to get to lay flat since the cold weather kept it more rigid and coiled. Installing the rope lighting this year in above freezing weather made it much easier to get it to lay flat and straight. We had one more blue light to put in, so we ran the blue rope lighting across and then stapled it in place. The next step was to mark out the center circle. We are doing a 20 foot diameter circle, which requires 63 feet of rope lighting, which can be calculated using the pi formula. I got a little off when I was marking the circle and figured out that if Christian held the end of the tape, it made it much easier to accurately mark the circle. The main differences putting in the center circle lighting are that you'll want to use a staple about every foot or two so you can curve the rope lighting and you'll also need to run an extension cord to the lighting since it starts in the middle of the rink. Continue using yard staples around the rest of the circle, following the line to create a nicely rounded circle. We might do goal lines in the future, but for this year, the center circle and red and blue lines were plenty. I ordered some extra lighting to do a rectangle, which will form the boundary lines for an ice pickleball court once the ice is in and a net is added. The lighting being used is a heavy duty strip light that can change colors and is controlled using a remote. You'll need about 128 feet of lighting since a pickleball court is 44 feet long by 20 feet in width. And I thought I'd ordered a 150 foot section, but it turns out it was only 120 feet long. So we ended up shortening the length of the court. But next season, I'll order a longer reel if the pickleball court ends up being a hit. We ended up shortening the pickleball court off camera to make it work without needing to order and wait for new lighting to come in. Once it was installed, I stood on top of the warming house to get a bird's eye view of the pickleball court lighting and the more traditional hockey lighting. As you know, outdoor rink building is all about weather and timing. And if your lights go in early and you get a big snowfall, that could pose a bit of a problem as you don't want to damage the lights to remove snow before the liner goes in. And of course, the liner can only go in right before you're ready to fill, which is once the weather forecast is cold enough and snow isn't in the immediate forecast, which is easier said than done. And otherwise leaves, animals walking on the liner and wind are going to be an issue. Putting in the under ice LED lighting took about three to four hours with the preparation and then filming everything. So having it done early and in warm weather was worth it to me. But if you do yours right before the liner goes in, then a snowfall won't be something you'd need to worry about. I decided to mark the rope lighting with utility flags in case we get a lot of snow prior to the liner going in so I can be extra careful clearing snow around these areas. 
This way, you'll avoid catching rope lighting in your snowblower auger and having to do a last minute repair before flooding the rink like I did once in the past. With all the LED lighting, you'll likely have a lot of extension cords and surge protectors, so I used a plastic storage tote to better protect everything and organize the cords, at least for the time being. Before doing the liner, if you have just a little snow, it's not a big deal, but you may want to clear off the lights so they shine at their brightest. And here's the lighting from the last time we did the rink, so I can show the final steps of the process, since it's still too warm to fill our rink this season. I got up at 6 in the morning to roll out the liner, and then my wife and our friend Jackie joined to help. It's generally calm early in the morning at our house, so this is ideal for putting in the liner. Next, we started to fill the rink with water and put the yellow bumpers on top of the boards to hold the liner in place. Here's the rink at the end of the day, and once it was filled completely, it took about five to six more days before we had ice to skate on, and as you can see, the under ice LED lights shine right through. I hope this video gives you some ideas and inspiration to do under ice LED lighting at your rink, or that you just enjoy checking out the process, and I hope it answers a few questions you may have if you haven't already done the lighting in the past. Building an outdoor rink is a highlight of our family's year, and it's a labor of love, but it's always great to see the smiles on kids' faces and everyone having fun out there. Once it cools down, we'll have this year's under ice LED lighting covered, and we'll show that in the year five rink build video, which will come out early next year. Thanks again for watching and have fun skating on those outdoor rinks again this season. Cheers.